Hi, I'm Admiral. In this video, I'll be doing a randomized playthrough of Pokemon Fire Red. I like Fire Red a lot, but I don't play it very often because it's pretty short and fairly easy, so it's not very interesting to run through. However, I will give you guys a fun Admiral fact. It's the game I picked for my first and only Nuzlocke, which I did around a year ago on my Twitch channel. I didn't really care for Nuzlocking though, so don't expect to see it on here unless there's either a ton of demand or I'm really desperate for a video idea. In terms of the actual randomization process, the only changes I made were to my potential encounters and to the Pokémon of trainers. That means that every trainer, from my rival to the gym leaders in Elite Four, will have a team of completely random Pokémon. That encompasses everything from Rattata to Mewtwo. I've also made some quality of life changes, but those won't do anything except for make the game more manageable for me. If you're interested, I'll outline those in the description. The only one that might impact gameplay is the fact that wild Pokémon can have held items, including TMs, so things will be a bit more interesting on that end. Thankfully, that's all of the introduction that this needs. I go ahead and get Professor Oak to emerge from the Shadow Realm to get me my starter, and peruse my new options, which are Azuril, Mudkip, and Pidgey. I'm torn for a moment between Azuril and Mudkip, since Azuril may have huge power, but I ultimately go with the Kip. That ends up being the right choice, as my rival's Azuril only knows Splash, letting us win the first battle handily. I named my rival Normal for this run, since, you know, it's randomized, so we're not normal. You see what I did there? Afterwards, I go north to Viridian, grab the parcel for Oak, and head back south for the Pokedex and Pokeballs. With those, I go back to Route 1 and catch myself a Larvitar. If you're a regular viewer on the channel, or are just familiar with Pokemon, you'll know what a beast this evolves into. If you're not, just know that Larvitar's final evolution is a pretty disgusting Pokemon to get early. This route also has some Ninetales, but to be honest, I don't really want it since its level up moveset is... Uh, stinky. I do get a Beauty Fly, and then decide to move on. On Route 2, I catch a Talo, a Shedinja, and a Blaziken, so our team is already pretty stacked. In Viridian Forest, a Kyogre takes out half of the crew, but I also catch a Dragonair, a Snorlax, and Mew, so I'd say it was worth the risk. Beauty Fly and Larvitar are definitely getting swapped out for Snorlax and Dragonair. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but I promise there's a reason Mew isn't coming out yet. Mew's level up moveset is... Ugh, not great. It doesn't learn Psychic until level 40, so until I get more TMs, it's not a great call to have Mew running around with just Pound. Next, I do some grinding to get the team's levels closer to Brock's team before we start. While he'd normally just have Geodude and Onyx, I don't know what he has anymore, so it's important that I'm ready for anything. As ready as I can be right now, anyway. The battle against Brock sees me lead Shedinja into his Fampy. I hit it with 6 sand attacks, and it can't do anything to hit Shedinja, so instead it just sets up 6 defense girls before going for a bunch of growls. Shedinja takes it to half health before I decide to stop messing around and send out Snorlax. Fampy hits Snorlax with a growl on the switch, and then misses a tackle as we set up with a belly drum. Fampy misses another tackle before we take it to red health with one of our own. A follow-up takes it down, and Brock's second Pokemon comes out next. Delcaddy misses a sing, and then gets one shot by tackle, winning our first gym badge. That battle would have been even easier if I'd remembered to use a return TM on Snorlax that it held when I caught it, but oh well. I make my way to Mount Moon next, and on the way Mudkip evolves before I catch a Chansey, a Pinsir, holding the TM for Sludge Bomb, and a Salamence, who I immediately swap into my party for Tratini when I get to the Pokemon Center outside of Mount Moon. While there, I also buy a Magikarp, who turns out to actually be a Dusclops, who will definitely be helpful once Shedinja is no longer useful. Shedinja is a really fun Pokemon to use because of its ability, and it's also the first shiny I ever caught, but its stats and move lists don't make it very viable for the long haul. I travel through Mount Moon next, and catch a Tentacruel and an Omanite as I make my way along. I also pick up the Helix Fossil, which should theoretically not be an Omanite, but I'm not sure. After that, nothing else of importance happens before I'm back in the fresh air. Instead of heading straight for the Nugget Bridge in the rival fight, I decide to check out the grass outside of Cerulean for some more neat encounters. Celebi is the only Pokemon I catch, but I'm honestly not that interested in using it. I don't dislike Celebi or anything, I've just never quite had an interest in using it. Unfortunately, I forgot to record my search, so here's Celebi's summary page instead. Luckily, I did not forget to record the rival fight, so you can watch as Salamence takes care of his team. Most of his Pokémon go down to a couple of headbutts each, so this isn't a fight worth describing in too much detail. In fact, the only reason I'm talking about it as much as I am is so that there's a lot of narration for this section, because that means I can play back the fight at a speed that's actually watchable. I'm not trying to give people seizures because I've had to reduce the footage to a bunch of flashing images so it can actually fit the narration. 
All of that aside, two vault pixes, a marrow, and a chancy later, and we're good to go. I make my way to Bill's next and catch a Machamp, a Slowbro, and an Alakazam. I decide to swap Shedinja out for Alakazam, since I need the heavy hitting power it offers over Shedinja's immunity utility. This is also a good swap, since it means my team is no longer entirely comprised of Gen 3 Pokemon and Snorlax. I love Hoenn, but the point of a randomizer is to incorporate variety into a playthrough. I take some time to level Alakazam up, and then head to the gym for Misty. I lead with Alakazam as Misty sends out a Dunsparce. A Psybeam from Alakazam sends the funky yellow fellow to a similarly pigmented health, as Dunsparce just misses a glare. A follow-up from Alakazam finishes it off, so I switch to Marsh Tomp as Misty brings in Pseudowoodo. A Water Gun does decent damage into Pseudowoodo, who retaliates with a Rock Throw. I switch to Mudshot, hoping the extra power will finish it, but it's left in the red before hitting Marsh Tomp hard with a Flail. I switch to Blaziken as Misty heals, and then hit Pseudowoodo with a double kick that takes it deep into the red. It just goes for low kick instead of the super effective rock throw, so we're in no danger as another kick finishes the battle. Next is some more travel south, which means no encounters. I grab a Kingdra on my way to Vermilion, and then head east where I meet an Armaldo and a Grobile. After that, I clear through the SSN. The rival fight is pretty similar to the last one, so I'll just let it exist as background footage for this section. Just a bunch of low level, low threat Pokemon here too. Next up is the battle with Lieutenant Surge, and I was thinking about getting some more levels on the team, but honestly, I don't think we need them. The only thing I'm worried about is Talos' lack of evolution, but otherwise we've got a really solid team, especially for such an early point in the game. I end up replacing Taylor with a Croconaw I fish up because it can use Cut, so it's not even a big issue. We aren't even done with a third gym, and I think we almost have our final team. Surge leads with Metatite as I send out Marsh Tomp. I detect turn 1 cancels our Mudshot, but on the next turn, Marshtomp leaves Metatite with a sliver after taking a soft confusion. I have Marshtomp use Tackle to finish it, but Lieutenant Surge heals. That just means our follow-up Mudshot takes it down, so it's over to Alakazam as Surge sends Snorlax to scuffle. One Psybeam leaves Snorlax just above half, which is perfect since Snorlax goes for Belly Drum. That guarantees a second Psybeam kills, letting me send out Blaziken against Surge's Pinsir. Ember offers a clean one-shot, so that's our third badge. I head to the rock tunnel next, but none of the encounters here are very interesting. I catch a slow king and a septile for the heck of it, but find myself in Lavender Town soon enough without much to show for it. I head due west to Celadon instead of doing the Pokemon Tower, where I encounter Team Rocket. However, on the way there, I encounter something far more important. I catch myself a Rayquaza, who immediately joins the team after I head just west of town to get the Fly HM. Rayquaza is my favorite legendary, so there's no way I'm passing up a chance to use it, especially since it's about to learn Dragon Claw. I also check out the Game Corner prize Pokemon to see if I want anything, I don't, and grab the free Eevee, which is now a ferret that I won't be using. With all that sorted, I'm ready to attend to my business in town. We carve a path through the rocket hideout and face Giovanni. He leads with a Staryu, who survives a Dragon Claw with a sliver before hitting a soft rapid spin. Another Dragon Claw finishes it off, so Giovanni sends out a Dratini next. A single super effective Dragon Claw takes it down, and Giovanni sends out a Why Not, his third and final Pokemon. We hit it hard with the Dragon Claw, and it responds with a failed counter. Remember, this is before the physical special split, so Dragon Claw is technically a special move. That lets us hit it one last time to win an easy battle. With the self scope in hand, I can head back east to the Pokemon Tower, where my rival awaits. He leads with Sableye, and I send out Rayquaza. I go for Dragon Claw, but Rayquaza flinches off a fake out. We connect on the next turn to leave Sableye in the yellow before taking a soft astonish. Sableye protects on the next turn, but a follow up finally takes it down. Meryl is next, and we stay in. Our first Dragon Claw leaves it in shambles, and it just goes for Tail Whip. We finish it on the next turn, and Polito is up third. A critical Dragon Claw one shots, and we finally switch to Marsh Tomp to deal with Chin Chow. We get out sped and confused off Supersonic, but connect with a Mud Shot anyway to one shot. Last is Cronon, so I send out Blaziken to kick it once to win the battle. Now I have to actually finish the Pokemon Tower, but it's pretty straightforward. As I free Mr. Fuji, I decide that I really need an electric type since I can't remember who on my team learns Thunderbolt, and so I grab two strong potential candidates, Manectric and Latios. With them, I clear out the rest of the tower and head to Celadon for Erika. I face off against Erika, leading with Rayquaza. She sends out... Ah, oh, shit. Reggie Ice takes a hard hit from our Agent Power before retaliating with an equally hard Icy Wind. Even with the speed drop, we still go first and take it out with another Agent Power. Slugma's out second, but goes down to a single Ancient Power. Third out is Rhydon, marking two potential D's Nuts jokes that I chose not to make for this battle, and so I switch to Marshtomp, who nails it with a quad-effective Water Gun to one-shot and win the badge. 
I head down the cycling road next, and check out the encounters next to Fuchsia before heading into the Safari Zone. On my way down Cycling Road, I catch a Suicune, and just outside of Fuchsia, I catch a Ho-Oh, a Groudon, and a Latias. So, I guess I can just have a full team of Legendary and Mythical Pokémon if I want. I'm not sure if I'll do that just because it would be kinda easy, and I'm pretty attached to the team I have now, but there's also nothing stopping my opponents from having an insane team either, so maybe I will. Instead of making a decision on that, I head to the Safari Zone next to get Surf and the Warden's Teeth. While I'm there, I catch a Walrein and a Zapdos, so I can definitely make an insane team if I really want. Either way, I decide I want to grind a bit after battling some of the gym trainers. Even though my team is absurdly stacked, I don't think I'm quite stacked enough to do major fights under level. With that, it's time for Koga. He leads with Alakazam, and I send out Snorlax. Alakazam sets up a Calm Mind before taking a headbutt all the way to red health. Koga heals on the next turn, so Alakazam remains on the field after another headbutt. It nails Snorlax with a Psychic that leaves him just above half health, so we're able to finish it off with another headbutt. I switch to Rayquaza as Armaldo comes out, and use Fly as it protects. On the next turn, Fly can actually leave Armaldo a bit above half health, as it just fails to use a second protect. We trade Ancient Powers after, which leaves Armaldo in the red and Rayquaza deep in the yellow. Koga heals as a second Ancient Power does what seems to be exactly half of its health of damage, so a final hit finishes it off. I bring in my own Alakazam as Weezen comes in and nail it with a side beam that leaves it in the yellow. It fires back with a nasty sludge, but we're able to outspeed and finish it on the next turn. Last is Arbok, so I stay in to have Alakazam nail it with a critical side beam to one shot. Next is a return to Saffron, where I decide to tackle Sylphco before Sabrina. There's a rival fight and another Giovanni encounter here, so I need to be on my guard. I decide to clear the place out to get the team more levels before accidentally starting the rival fight without healing or clearing all of the grunts. I lead with Marshtomp into Normal's Goldeen. We trade Horn Attack for Mudshot, but it quickly becomes apparent that Marshtomp can't finish this, so I heart switch in Alakazam. We finish it with a side beam after taking a Horn Attack, and stay in for Arbok. Just like Koga's, a critical side beam is able to one-shot. I switch to Salamence for his Tangela, and I'm able to dodge a Stun Spore during the first turn of Fly. We connect to take it to half health, but that means we don't dodge Stun Spore on the next turn. I switch to Ember to lower my chances of full paralysis, and we break through to finish it after taking a weak bind. I bring in Snorlax for his Azumarill, and we start trading Body Slams for Double Edges. Snorlax's natural bulk and Azumarill's recoil damage mean that we come out on top, so I switch to Marshtomp for his final Pokemon, an Abra. It can only use Teleport, so this is safe and gets me a little bit closer to a Swampert. One mud shot gets us the win. Next up is Giovanni. He leads with Jigglypuff, and I send out our new Swampert. One Surf doesn't one-shot, but it just misses Rollout and goes down on the next turn. Giovanni sends out Corsola next, so I switch to Blaziken. One set of Double Kick should handle it, but instead I accidentally hit Blaze Kick, which misses. Worse, Bubble Beam two shots and Double Kick doesn't one-shot after all, so Blaziken goes down. I send out Alakazam to finish it with his shiny new Psychic, and then Giovanni sends out the luckiest Latios in existence. Just watch. I send out Rayquaza, but we get outsped and paralyzed by Dragon Breath. We get fully paralyzed, so we end up going down to a second Dragon Breath. I send out Snorlax next. Latios uses Luster Purge, lowering our special defense, with 50% chance by the way, as we go for Yawn. We go for Body Slam after, but get paralyzed by another Dragon Breath, and get fully paralyzed again! I use Rest to purge the Paralysis, and start getting ready to set up a Belly Drum. Latios only gets two turns of sleep though, and fires off another Luster Purge. It protects on the turn we wake up to dodge a Yawn, and then gets a double protect off, because of course it does. We finally connect with Yawn, and then get paralyzed again from Dragon Breath. Luckily, we break through to connect with Body Slam, and can start firing away. Latios only gets one turn of sleep, because of course it does, but that's enough for us to take it low and have Alakazam finish it off after it takes Snorlax down. Last up is his Loudred, who thankfully can't do too much to Alakazam, ending this brutal fight. So, I'm now heavily reconsidering any previously held ideas regarding balance and challenging gameplay and content. I will absolutely be retaining the most disgusting team ever used for a Pokemon Fire Red playthrough, because I will never sit through a disaster of a battle like that again. Sabrina has to wait, because I'll be overhauling pretty much the entire team. I bring Latios in for Alakazam, Groudon in for Snorlax, Ho-Oh in for Blaziken, Suicune in for Swampert, and Zapdos in for Salamence. The only remaining member of the original team is Rayquaza. I feel kinda bad because I liked the squad we had, 
but I will never get done dirty like that again. Or at least, that's what I thought, because after an excruciating couple of hours trying to grind out the new team, my laziness prevails and we're back to the old crew. My biggest complaint with this game has always been the lack of good places to grind, so validation is at least a decent consolation prize. That means it's time for Sabrina. She leads with Seal, and I send out Alakazam. We set up a calm mind before getting hit by a weak icy wind. On the next turn, I smack it with a psychic to one shot, so Sabrina sends out a Metagross. I send out Swampert and take it to just below half health with a mud shot before it fires back with a confusion. I finish it off with a surf, and Sabrina sends out Golem. We one shot with a critical surf, and Sabrina's last Pokemon comes out. Kingler makes Swampert flinch off a stump, but on the next turn, we connect with a mud shot to lower its speed before switching in Salamence. Luckily, we switched on a mud shot, so Salamence is undamaged. We hit it with a headbutt, and then go for fly. Kingler protects on the turn we're in the air, so on the next turn, it's helpless as we crit to finish, winning the battle. That means that our next battle is against Blaine, but I make a couple of stops before I do that. First, I head to the Fighting Dojo to see what their two free Pokemon are. Unfortunately, it's just a choice between a Weeping Bell and an Omanite, so I grab the Grass-type and stick it in the box. After that, I head back to Pewter to grab the Old Amber. I head to Cinnabar next, where I give the scientists the Helix Fossil before heading to the Pokemon Mansion for the Gym Key. And now it's time for Blaine. He leads with a Carvana, who goes down to a single headbutt from Salamence. We take a bit of rough skin damage and stay in as Blaine sends in Lilip. We go for Fly as it sets up Amnesia, and then miss on the next turn, because 95 accuracy actually means a 95% chance to miss. Even worse, we get hit by Confuse Ray on the landing, so our next attempt at Fly sees Salamence hit itself on the turn we're supposed to attack. I throw in the towel and switch in Blaziken, who takes an Agent Power that crits and gets the Omni Boost, because of course it does. I take two turns to set up Bulk Up, as Lily thankfully doesn't get any more crits or stat boosts, though we're definitely not in good shape after. Luckily, one set of Double Kicks is just enough damage to knock this thing out. I bring Swampert out as Blaine sends out Entei, who actually isn't that threatening. It goes for Leer turn 1 before we take it deep into the red off of a Surf. Blaine heals, and we do the same thing. Blaine heals again, but he's just delaying the inevitable as we bring Entei back down. It goes for an Ember, but obviously does very little damage before we finish it off. Salamence comes back out for Blaine's final Pokemon, a Gloom. It can't survive one fly, so we dodge a stun spore before finishing the battle and getting the badge. After that, I go straight to Viridian for the final gym battle, but take some time to quickly adjust our moveset. Some notable changes are Swampert's new Ice Beam, Salamence's new Flamethrower, and Blaziken getting Brick Break and Aerialis. I challenge Giovanni, who leads with a Smoochum. I lead with Salamence, who takes it low with a Flamethrower that gets a burn. Smoochum retaliates with a Sing, putting us to sleep. On our first turn of sleep, Giovanni heals, and on the second turn, Smoochum hits a surprisingly hard Psychic. Luckily, burn damage ensures that when we wake up, Salamence is able to finish it off with a Flamethrower. Next up is Pilloswine, so I bring in Blaziken. We take it incredibly low with a Blaze Kick as it just misses a takedown. On the next turn, Pilloswine uses Endure, so our follow-up Brick Break doesn't end it. I switch to Aerial Ace, but Giovanni switches into Kadabra. Unfortunately for poor Kadabra, our Aerial Ace crits, one-shotting. Giovanni brings in Psyduck next, so I send out Swampert. I decide to give Mudshot one last appearance, since we're getting the TM for Earthquake for winning, and use it to take Psyduck down after a few turns. It only goes for Screech and Confusion, so a miss doesn't even end up punishing us. Pillswine comes back out, so it's back over to Blaziken. Giovanni heals as we smack it with an Aerial Ace, and then we outspeed to finish it with Brick Break. Last is an Electric, so Mudshot actually gets to make one last appearance, one-shotting to win the battle. I head straight to the rival fight before Victory Road next. He leads with Latias and I send out Swampert. On the first turn, it does nasty damage with Psychic, and our Retaliatory Ice Beam does slightly less than nasty damage. On the next turn, we do the same thing, so now Swampert is in the red and Latias is in yellow health. Latias outspeeds to finish Swampert off with Mist Ball, so I send in Snorlax. He tanks the Psychic almost well, and finishes it off with a Shadow Ball. Next is Slowpoke, who we nail with a Shadow Ball before taking a critical Psychic. Our next Shadow Ball barely misses out on the kill, and Slowpoke disables it, so a return on the next turn finishes it off. Third up is Squirtle, who protects to dodge our first return. Squirtle hits a pathetic Rapid Spin before taking a strong return from Snorlax, which finishes it on the next turn. Masquerade is next, so I bring in Rayquaza. We peg it with a hard edge of power, but get hit by Stun Spore in return. Masquerade outspeeds on the next turn to hit a Soft Gust, and we break through Paralysis to finish it with Ancient Power. Alakazam comes out for us to deal with Azumarill, nailing it with a critical Psychic. 
It retaliates with double edge, so recoil ensures that our next psychic can kill no matter what. Last is Carvana, so I bring in Blaziken to outspeed and one-shot with Brick Break. I trudge through Victory Road and arrive at the Pokemon League. I decide that, even with our solid team, we're not nearly strong enough to challenge the end of the game quite yet, so I set myself down to do some grinding. Here are our stats and moves at the end. Things are looking really good, and Alakazam can learn Shockwave, so we finally have a way to deal with most Water-type Pokemon. All that's left now is the Elite Four and the Champion. First up is Lorelei, who leads with a Wigglytuff into my Swampert. Wigglytuff outspeeds and connects with the Sing, so after accidentally trying to run, I switch in Blaziken. We leave Wigglytuff with a sliver off of a Brick Break, so I use Bulk Up as Lorelei heals. That ensures that our next Brick Break will finish it off, so it's over to Alakazam as Lorelei brings in Whalemer. Our first Shockwave leaves it in yellow health before it sets up an Amnesia. It's not enough to avoid our second Shockwave, so it goes down and we stay in as Croconaw comes in next. A Shockwave does excellent damage, but doesn't get a knockout. Croconaw just seems interested in knocking our stats down, so we're still undamaged as it goes down. Next up is Bagon, so I bring in its older cousin to one-shot with Dragon Claw. Last out for Lorelei is Tauros, so I bring in Blaziken. I open with Bulk Up to offset Intimidate, but Tauros outspeeds and nails us with Swagger, so we're confused and at plus 3 attack on the next turn. Not a great position to be in. Even worse, Tauros opens the next turn by nailing us with a critical thrash that takes Blaziken all the way down to just 2 hit points. Luckily, Blaziken snaps right out of confusion to one-shot with Brick Break, clutching up to win us the battle. Next is Bruno, leading with a Clamp Pearl into my Swampert. I go for Earthquake as it just hits a soft clamp, leaving it in red health. Bruno heals on the next turn, so I just use Earthquake again, leaving it back where it was before. Bruno doesn't heal this time, so a Surf finishes it off. He brings in Hoppip next, and I almost switch before realizing that, actually, this thing has a Quad Ice weakness, so I need to stay in. It outspeeds and misses a Sleep Powder, so I do one-shot with Ice Beam. I switch to Alakazam for Wingle, hitting a Quad Effective Shockwave for another one-shot. I almost switch again for Poliwag, but stay in for a third one-shot. Last is Metacham, so I stay in on the one Pokemon I should switch for. One Psychic brings it to Yellow Health, and it just goes for Calm Mind. The special defense boost isn't enough to keep it from going down to another Psychic, so we win. Third is Agatha. She leads with Cumbertops, and I send out Swampert. It outspeeds to hit a Sand Attack, but we connect with Earthquake anyway to one-shot. She sends out Waylord next, so I switch to Alakazam. One Shockwave leaves it comfortably above half health, and Waylord just goes for Mist. I use Calm Mind, ready to stack up so I can finish it with one hit, but Waylord goes for Rest. That means I can safely use two Shockwaves to finish it off and switch back to Swampert as Vulpix comes in. One Surf takes it down after it sets up a Safeguard. I bring in Salamence next to deal with her Kingdra, since its only weakness before Gen 6 was Dragon. One Dragon Claw leaves it just below half health, and it sets up with Agility. That lets Kingdra outspeed to hit a pretty hard Twister, but we don't flinch and can finish it off. I swing over to Swampert one last time as Mawile comes out, and set it to what looks like exactly half health with Earthquake after it uses on our defense. A Citrus Berry ensures that our next one won't kill, so I switch to Blaziken as it goes for Stockpile. A critical Blaze Kick one-shots, winning the battle. Last up to be put down is Lance. He leads with Gengar, and I send out, of course, Swampert. A critical Shadow Ball sends us to half health, but a Surf and Retaliation does even more damage to Gengar. Surprisingly, Lance switches, so a follow-up hits Cacturn instead of Gengar. I bring in Blaziken on a Needle Arm, and then send Cacturn deep into the red with Blaze Kick. A Health Citrus Berry keeps Cacturn out of healing range, so an Aerial Ace ensures that it goes down. Gengar comes back in, so I bring in Snorlax to deal with it using Shadow Ball. Unfortunately, Gengar outspeeds and uses Destiny Bond, so I can only helplessly watch Snorlax get taken away by one of the cheapest moves in the game. I bring in Alakazam, and Lance sends out Cloyster, an amazingly lucky matchup. Cloyster opens with Protect, dodging our Shockwave, and then annoyingly gets a second Protect off. It doesn't attempt a third, so we finally connect in one shot. Lance sends out Slugma Nuts next, so I bring in Swampert. Once Surf takes it down, and Lance brings out his final Pokemon, a Primeape. It's back to Alakazam, who takes it out with a single Psychic, leaving us with only the Champion. Before we start, this is your chance to grab a snack, some water, and a blanket, because this is a long one. Normal leads with a Snorlax, and I send out Swampert. I hit a pretty pitiful Surf, and Snorlax responds with a block, which is pretty painful. I go for Earthquake next, doing much more respectable damage, and Snorlax hits a devastating Hyper Beam. I can't switch out, so I just go for another Earthquake as it recharges. On the next turn, Normal heals, keeping another Earthquake from finishing it, and then he brings in Jump Bluff. I go for Ice Beam, but it outspeeds and finishes Swampert off with Mega Drain. I bring in Blaziken next, and Jump Bluff goes for Leech Seed as we miss Blaze Kick, 
and then outspeeds to connect with Sleep Powder on the next turn. Blaziken sleeps for a few turns, but finally wakes up and connects with Blaze Kick. Normal Heart switches into Azumarill, so I bring in Alakazam. We dodge a Hydro Pump on the switch and do decent damage with Shockwave on the next turn. Azumarill just misses another Hydro Pump, so I go to Shockwave again. Azumarill is apparently sick of missing Hydro Pump, as it goes for Rain Dance. We nail it with another Shockwave to leave it with a sliver and take a devastating Hydro Pump in return. We finish it off though and bring Blaziken back in for Snorlax. We do heavy damage with Brick Break, but don't finish it. Luckily, Snorlax misses a Hyper Beam, letting us finish it on the next turn with another Brick Break. Numel comes in next, and since Swampert is gone, I just go for Brick Break with Blaziken before going down to an Earthquake. I send in Salamence next, who finishes it off with a Dragon Claw. Omastar comes in and uses Protect to dodge a Dragon Claw. On the next turn, we do solid damage with Dragon Claw, but Ancient Power takes us below half, so I have to switch to Snorlax. We take another Ancient Power on the switch, but then Omastar just gets a double Protect off while we go for Yawn. It doesn't try for a third, so we're finally able to make it sleepy. After that, I just go for Shadow Ball for pretty middling damage, and also heal up Alakazam as it sleeps. We get a special defense drop, but it also gets it to healing range, so I have to put it back to sleep to get a safe switch into Alakazam. I bring it in, and set up one Calm Mind, but Omastar wakes up and hits a Spike Cannon, so I decide to just finish it off with one Shockwave. Jump Pluff comes back out next, and one Psychic takes it down. Last is Smeargle, so a final Psychic wins the battle and the champion's title. As always, Oak comes in to kick his grandson while he's down before inducting us into the Hall of Fame, finishing the game and this playthrough. I'm really glad I was able to get an electric move before the Elite Four. He had a surprising number of water types. Otherwise, there's not much to say. Randomizers are always fun, but this one was kinda boring too. A lot of trainers just had a bunch of baby Pokemon, so there wasn't any challenge to it. But I guess I should count myself lucky, because this could have been much worse. Anyway, there's not much else to do but sign off as the credits roll. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. My next video will be an attempt at Pokemon Sword with just a Dragapult, which is pretty exciting. Unless, of course, I'm still too stupid to figure out how to set that up, in which case the next video is a surprise. Also, please consider leaving a comment below. Your feedback will help me improve, and YouTube really likes it when people comment. And finally, thank you so much for watching.